It is pretty much a foregone conclusion that Kristen Stewart will be nominated at the Oscars this year for Best Actress for her portrayal of Princess Diana. But how is this movie on the whole? Let's talk about Spencer. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews. Welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new film Spencer. It is available on demand right now, and it's still in some select theaters as well as we ramp up to Oscar season. Uh, before we get to this movie, though, I do want to welcome you into Dan Reviews. It. Please consider subscribing down below. Would love to have you aboard. And uh, back in our lovely uh, movie theater backdrop, we uh, are, are, have not been here in probably, I don't know, six, eight, nine months. Uh, it's been a while, but we used to do a lot of the movie reviews here, and I figured since it is Oscar season and uh, this is certainly to be a contender, we may as well have uh, the movie theater as our background today instead of my, my DVD collection. So let's dive into this movie. Look, uh, you know, Kristen Stewart, I think, is a very competent actress. I know she got, you know, a, a lot of heat, I think, for several years because of the whole Twilight thing, um, but... The movies she's been picking uh, the last, let's say, five or six years have been uh, really interesting. She's made some very, very interesting choices, you know, going some some indie movies. And uh, last year, one of my favorite Christmas movies, The Happiest Season, I thought she did very well in a little, uh, you know, romantic comedy. Um, but here she is uh, starring as the Princess of Wales, Diana Spencer. Um, and that is, of course, how, how the movie gets its last name. This is, you know, the, the, the people's princess. I am old enough to remember not quite when they got married, I don't think. Um, but I certainly remember when they were married, uh, and, you know, subsequently all the troubles they had. I've never been a huge follower of the royal family, but, you know, in the 80s and 90s, you would have had to have been living under a rock to not know about sort of the, the ins and the outs of Princess Diana and Prince Charles and their relationship uh, with the entire royal family and all of that. So uh, this movie covers just one specific uh, Christmas weekend in 1991 where things are started to fall apart uh, inside the family. Uh, Cam Camilla Parker Bowles, who Prince Charles is still currently married to, she had uh, already entered the picture. And so, you know, we see her in this uh, trying to, to stir things up. Um, and Timothy Spall, Jack Farthing, Sean Harris uh, all have supporting roles here. And Sally Hawkins is uh, the royal dresser. She gets uh, Diana dressed uh, during the day. Um, now, she is sort of a, a fictitious character, an amalgamation of a few uh, different people, perhaps. And in fact, this whole movie uh, is really billed as historical fiction. It does not pretend uh, to be, you know, the be all and end all last word of, okay, this is what really happened. This is what Diana was thinking, X, Y, and Z. No, right from the get go, we learn, okay, this is a fable based on these real people. So um, with that in mind, some of the things that happen in this movie are a little more thriller-esque even than just your your basic historical drama. It's more of a psychological thriller almost at times. Um, you know, not, it doesn't totally veer into that camp, but certainly, um, you know, more, a little more than I was expecting because I actually wasn't sure, you know, if you, if you watch my videos, you know, I don't watch trailers or anything. So I did not really know how accurate this was going to be, but they tell you right up front, like, this is a fable. So I was like, okay, well, then this is only going to be a little bit of, of, uh, realism and, and maybe some other things involved. But yeah, it really uh, gets to a psychological level with Princess Diana as a figure. And it's more of a, a look into um, the psyche of her as opposed to, okay, here's what definitely happened such and such a day or this was a conversation that happened. No. Um, so anyway, I think Kristen Stewart has been picking a lot of interesting roles, but uh, this one, I have to say, I, even I was shocked. I'm a fan of hers, but I was floored by this performance. We have had really a just amazing year of uh, women portraying real life people. You know, Jessica Chastain uh, with with Tammy Faye, Jennifer Hudson with Aretha Franklin, uh, Nicole Kidman who just won the Golden Globe for Best Actress over. 
Kristen Stewart uh, for her portrayal of Lucille Ball in Being the Ricardo. So a lot of real life women and all of them have really knocked it out of the park, I got to say. Um, but I think this is probably the best of all of them. I think this could be, uh, in terms of actresses, my favorite performance of the year. Um, and, and like I said, I'm old enough to sort of remember uh, a, a good bit about the life of Princess Diana and how she uh, handled herself and how she carried herself and, you know, little things about her, um, her, her motions and her head tilts and, and that. And Kristen Stewart absolutely nails it. She embodies this woman for sure. And, the, the, you know, the makeup crew and the, and the hairstyling crew, all of these people deserve accolades as well because uh, they, you know, they really helped transform Stuart into Princess Diana. She, she did not do it alone, but boy, she carries it off so very well. And what's interesting is in thinking about her own history, you know, sort of being thrust into the spotlight at a young age and sort of being a, a bit more shy or reserved um, than maybe people thought she was. And, um, you know, I think she can relate a little bit to this kind of a role. I think it, it helped probably inform her performance a little bit, but just a little head tilt here or, you know, the way the way her eyes were. I mean, it, it was a magnificent performance. For me, I think from the, from the movies I've seen thus far, um, and I haven't seen all the potential Oscar contenders yet, but I'm definitely working my way through. This, for me, is the female performance of the year. Best actress, she deserves it uh, for my money. She's already won it uh, for a few different uh, groups. A lot of the, like, the local things, like Washington, D.C. film critics and Dallas critics and, you know, all of these sort of... Um, big city critics pools uh she has won best actress and she's been nominated for uh, many many others um but okay let's talk about this movie on the whole so we talked about that uh and i told you a little bit about how it is more of a psychological drama there's uh some maybe even thriller-esque moments in here um and you know how does that all sort of come together well it's from the director of this movie jackie which was about jackie kennedy from a few years ago um and uh, Natalie Portman was nominated for that film as well. I gave that movie an A. I loved it. Uh, the gentleman's name is Pablo Lorraine, um, and he uh, – it's funny. I, even before I knew that he directed this, because I didn't know until the credits were rolling at the end, um, I was getting these shades of the that Jackie film because the way it's shot, certainly the scoring – of the movie reminds me of Jackie. And I don't believe it's the same person, um, but Johnny Greenwood from Radiohead is the one who scored this film, Spencer. He may have scored Jackie too, I don't know, but um, he has scored There Will Be Blood, The Master, Phantom Thread, which he was Oscar nominated for, and in fact, he has scored Power of the Dog as well, which is a huge awards movie this season too so if he's not up for one of these movies he may be up for the other one at the oscars but yeah you know alt rock you know i grew up loving alternative rock and we've got trent reznor from nine inch nails doing a bunch of scores for things and he's won oscars and now uh, johnny greenwood you know could win for for this movie or for power of the dog i don't know but the score here definitely gives us this sort of uh, off-putting tone which is sort of why it reminded me of the score of Jackie um, because it's, it's just got this, this heavy sort of violin but, but very like curt kind of uh, orchestral sound to it um, and, and I think it, it set the tone very well. Um, I will say though the strongest point of this movie is the performance. The movie is not bad but I think it was a little bit – uh, jarring in the respect that nobody else really seemed to be portraying their character all that well. Jack Farthing uh, played Prince Charles, and first of all, he's a lot better looking than Prince Charles. The makeup people did not ugly him up, uh, you know, for the role. And she is so perfect in the role. It's it, it was it was a, a mismatch for me. The, the the two didn't really balance each other out. And also uh, Stella Gonier as Queen Elizabeth II. She did okay. Um, but, you know, there's another person very famous. You sort of know her mannerisms. And, and, and uh, Gonier just, just didn't do it for me, didn't quite measure up. Um, and there's also the matter of – and this, this was a 
something that Jackie had as well that maybe was a problem for people. I don't know. Uh, it did, was not a problem for me. It was a little bit more of a problem here, I think, um, is the sort of uh, long shots and sort of more, more slow, methodical pacing um, of, you know, certain conversations or, and, and I get it, we're in Diana's head and of course things seem to be moving at a snail's pace because she is bored with her life and all of that. I understand what they're going for here. Um, but I, for me, it didn't quite always work in this movie the same way it did in Jackie. But that being said, I was, you know, this movie flew by for me. It's an hour and 50 minutes or so. And, uh, I really did not feel the length at all, it, you know, for, for all of those slow scenes, the movie itself kind of flew by, so I appreciated that as well. Um, and they dabbled into a couple of real-life things with her, you know, the, her eating disorder for one thing. Um, but a lot of the things here are just complete fabrication. She has an obsession in this movie with Marie Antoinette. That is fiction. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for a history lesson, this is certainly not the movie uh, to give us that. But, uh, boy, w what a powerhouse performance tops of the year for me i think for the movies i've seen so far i would say uh that kristen stewart deserves best actress and i think probably andrew garfield deserves best actor for tick tick boom you know there's still a lot of movies i have yet to see the new denzel is coming out in a few days so i'm gonna watch that but um but i, I thought this was a brilliant performance in a very good movie we, we see a lot of times brilliant performances in so-so movies. This is better than that, um, but certainly a little bit of a step or two down from the movie Jackie uh, from the same director. So that will do it. Let me give it a grade before we wrap here. I'm going to leave Spencer with a B+. Uh, I do think it is a worthwhile film, um, but the performance is really the thing that elevates it way above anything else. So, all right, thank you for watching, and we'll see you back here next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.